In this video, we are going to look at a clock constraint, create clock, what is it, why it is needed and how it is used. What is create clock? Defining clock, it's a signal that acts as a trigger for a synchronous design to transition from one state to another. Defining create clock, create clock is a constraint for timing which defines the timing requirement for path between two synchronous elements during synthesis. For example, setup time and hold time such that uh, whenever a data is launched by a flip-flop, it is reliably captured by the adjacent flip-flop. Let's consider this particular circuit where the clock 1 and clock 2 are constrained to a period of 10 nanoseconds. Now what the synthesis tool does is it takes in this constraint and calculates the timing requirement between the registers. Then it chooses the standard cells from the library which meets this requirement. So this circuit works fine for the clock period of 10 nanoseconds. But let's assume that after tape out we are finding out the clock period must be 6 nanosecond instead of 10 nanosecond. Then what happens? There is a high probability that uh, some of the paths or many of the paths might not meet the timing and hence the circuit will not work for this higher frequency. So it's always important to constrain the clock to a proper value during synthesis. How to create clock? So this is the syntax for creating the clock. So first option we provide the period using hyphen period and in this case it's 10 nanoseconds. The next is providing the clock name using the hyphen name option. This is different from the port name or the pin name. So the other STC commands will use this clock name for defining its constraints. The next is uh, the duty cycle. In this case we are providing the uh, low time as 5 to 10. Based on this the duty cycle will be calculated. The last option is uh, the source of the clock. So it can be a port, pin or the net where the clock is connected from the external world or from an internal clock generator. Why to constrain clocks? Consider this rich to rich path where FF1 is the launch flop and FF2 is the capture flop triggered by the same clock. This path is synthesized by constraining clock period to 10 nanoseconds. You can see that one is asserted uh, before the setup time of FF1 and it is stable and hence it is reliably captured by FF1. Now after the clock to Q delay of FF1 and the combinational delay between FF1 and FF2, the output of uh, FF1 reaches the input of FF2 that is dat1 underscore in. which is uh, stable before the setup time of FF2. Hence, again, it's reliably captured by FF2. And now, after the clock to queue delay at FF2, uh, the output gets asserted at the pin Q underscore out. Now, we could see that the circuit works fine for a clock period of 10 nanoseconds. Now, let's consider a scenario where we uh, reduce the clock period to 6 nanoseconds and see what happens to the working of the circuit. Moving back to a place where that one has been asserted. Now I replace the clock with a much faster clock with a clock period of 6 nanoseconds. That one is reliably captured by FF1 because it's stable before the setup time of FF1. And the problem starts now. As the clock to queue delay and combinational delay are all computed by having a constraint of clock period of 10 nanoseconds, it's a bit higher uh, for a circuit which has a clock period of 6 nanoseconds. Hence, the input to FF2, that is dat1 underscore in, is not stable uh, before the setup time of FF2. Hence, it's not reliably captured. So, the output of FF2, that is Q underscore out, reaches a metastable state after clock to queue delay because the input is not properly captured. So this is uh, very important for anyone designing a circuit to constrain the clock to a proper working frequency 
uh, otherwise you might end up with setup time violations thank you for listening to this video 